I just love it when I find classic Japanese video games that borrow heavily from some of my favorite movies. For example, when you play a game like Contra or Metroid, it's hard not to notice the obvious nods to the Alien series, or perhaps more apt for this video, a game like Snatcher which blends elements of both Blade Runner and Terminator. In this case, we have a game that is similar to Snatcher in its gameplay, but totally different in terms of its content. Dead of the Brain is a point-and-click adventure game that takes a lot of inspiration from some of my favorite 80s horror movies, in particular the 1985 Stuart Gordon classic Reanimator and my personal favorite zombie movie of all time, Return of the Living Dead. In Dead of the Brain, we open to our main character, Cole, just getting home from his job as a painter and maintenance worker. When he gets a phone call from a friend, the eccentric Doc Cougar, who insists that Cole come over to his lab immediately to see his newest invention. Whatever that might be. When Cole arrives, he's immediately attacked by a vicious cat, apparently a dead cat, that the Doc has brought back to life with his new reanimating agent, although the cat is no longer the docile pet it once was. When a police officer arrives to investigate a noise complaint, he meets his maker when the undead feline tears out his jugular. In a panic, the doc administers his serum to the downed officer, causing him to spring back to life, out of control and craving human brains. As Cole and the doc run for their lives from the zombie cop, they very foolishly make a beeline for the nearby cemetery when their luck goes from bad to worse, as the doc clumsily spills his reanimating serum all over the ground, and you can guess what happens next. The serum soaks into the soil of the graveyard, and soon after, a legion of brain-starved zombies spring up from the ground. And that's when things really go off the rails. As you play through Dead of the Brain, you'll explore various locations, such as the police station, where everyone has apparently already had their brains feasted on, and eventually, a large hotel that's still under construction as you attempt to escape the zombie horde, eventually meeting up with a bunch of other survivors. And your main goals will be staying alive, eliminating the zombies that you come into contact with, and figuring out a way that you might be able to put an end to this whole zombie apocalypse thing. This all seems pretty simple at first, but eventually the story does take some pretty cool twists and turns where this zombie outbreak might not be the accident that it first seems to be. I won't spoil the whole story, but I'll just say it gets a little bit nuts, and we do eventually get the reveal that, for lack of a better term, there was a Terminator in your midst the whole time, so you can add that as another film this game takes inspiration from. The gameplay in Dead of the Brain is that of a pretty straightforward point-and-click adventure, and if you've been paying attention, you will have noticed footage from two different versions. That's because Dead of the Brain was released on both the PC-98 and the PC Engine CD. The better-looking footage you see here is from the PC-98 version, which also plays better, as you might expect. Point-and-click games are always better on the PC, after all, but the PC Engine version is not without its charms, and does come bundled with the sequel, a cool game in its own right, but we'll save that for another day. Also, I'm sure you noticed the conspicuous English text you've been seeing here, quite unusual for a game that 
never left Japan, eh? Well, that's because there are both English and Spanish fan-translated patches available for the PC-98 version, so now this game that was once relatively unknown outside of Japan can be enjoyed by a much larger audience. Also, the physical copy of the PC Engine version costs about a million dollars, so I definitely recommend going with the PC-98 ROM, which will cost you exactly zero dollars, which is a pretty good deal. Getting back to the gameplay itself though, if you've played a point and click game before, you'll feel right at home here. You'll be looking, using, and talking like you've never looked, used, and talked before. You do get plenty of opportunities to tangle with zombies though, and it's here that a ticking clock element is introduced, giving you a limited amount of time to make your move before the zombie takes a big bite out of you. Sometimes it's better to stand and fight, and sometimes it's better to use your brain while it's still in your head. There are plenty of scenes of graphic violence and gore to satisfy horror hounds, such as myself, and overall, for a fan of classic point-and-click titles, this is a unique experience. Plenty of blood and guts, zombies, and plot twists, all with a classic 90s anime art style, and a suitably creepy soundtrack. For sure, if you're a horror fan and you like a good point-and-click adventure, Dead of the Brain is about as good as it gets. It'll have you saying, More Brain. 